Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to the Contemporary Arts Center Studio B with Fran Kerner. My name is David Robinson Morris. I'm the curator of the most recent uh, exhibition behind every beautiful thing at the CAC New Orleans. Uh, and I will be your moderator for tonight. I get the privilege of speaking with and sitting with and being in conversation with Fran Kerner. Uh, if you remember, Fran's image was the hero image for our show behind every beautiful thing. So this is quite a joy tonight. Let me go over a bit of housekeeping and the agenda for tonight before we begin. We'll uh, begin with a conversation about Franz's history, practice, themes, past, and new work. Then we'll engage in a studio tour with Franz, which I'm really excited about. And we'll follow that up with questions, comments, and conversation from the audience. Uh, you can place your questions in the chat. Uh, please be mindful that uh, tonight's session is being recorded and that the CAC has muted all of our attendees uh, during the tour and during the initial conversation phase. Uh, I will read out your questions and ask your questions for you uh, in some cases. Last time was a bit different. We had some folks who are very familiar with the last artist and we may have that this time and I invited folks, folks to ask questions themselves to give voice. Um, with that, we will begin. Fran, welcome. I'm going to read your bio and then we're gonna hop right into it. Okay, sounds good. Perfect. Fran Kerner, a native New Orleanian, has been making art since she was a child. Kerner holds a BFA from Tulane University and an MFA from the University of New Orleans, majoring in painting with a minor in photography. She's taught at Tulane and the University of New Orleans. Yeah. <laughs> Kerner spoke at Tulane Women's Making Waves on Artistic Expressions of Resiliency. Kerner's work has been included in exhibitions at the Arthur Roger Gallery, New Orleans Museum of Art, Mobile Museum of Art, Lamar University Gallery, Biennial, very long uh, Italian name that I cannot pronounce, but you should go look on her website to, <laughs> to see it. The Wiregrass Museum of Art, Tulane University, Carroll Gallery, Collar Dune Day Art Museum, Acadiana Center for the Arts, Loyola University's Dival Art Gallery, Montgomery College, Rockville Gallery, Space 301, uh, Jonathan Ferreira Gallery, and the Contemporary Art Center, among others. Kerner's work is in the permanent collection of the Historic New Orleans Collection and the Arts Council of New Orleans. Kerner was an artist in residence at the Santa Fe Art Institute and Louisiana Artworks. Fran Kerner Studio was chosen as a satellite project for International Art Triennial Prospect II and Prospect Three Plus New Orleans. Kerner's artwork is collected throughout the USA and Europe. It can be seen online at www.franckerner.com. Fran, welcome, welcome Fran. <laughs> Thank I'm you. So so happy to be sitting in conversation with you tonight. Um, and I'm so glad that I get to ask all of my questions to you now <laughs> <laughs> that I had when uh, going through and curating the show, right? So my first question to you, now that I've read your bio, um, I'm curious, what is it that people don't know about from? Um, okay, so first off, I just want to tell you thank you so much um, for the honor of um, having been chosen for the open studio. So I, I really, and that you all advertise my work as, you know, the keynote piece that, that meant a lot. So, okay, so jumping right in, I'm just going to um, say that one of the things that, uh, there's a few things, because I don't really say a lot sometimes. Um, so one of the things is in 2016, I was diagnosed with PTSD from trauma and abuse. But the silver lining is that I now mentor young women who may be going through similar things. And, um, you know, it's given me um, 
a lot of joy to be on the other side of, um, you know, a lot of that stuff and um, be able to help others. So, um, you know, that's a big thing. Um, another thing is that I've been writing since I was 14 and I now have 60 studio and life journals and one of the local universities uh, is asking me to donate them for their archives, which is another big honor. Um, I'm a mom. Uh, I have three grown sons. They're wonderful. And I, I love being a mom. I loved it when they were little and now too. Um, oh, a friend of mine said to uh, say this, I'm a certified Louisiana master naturalist. So um, I love nature. Um, I didn't finish high school, but I have a bachelor of fine arts from Tulane and a master of art, fine arts from UNO. So, oh, and I grew up riding and training horses. So those are a few things that um, most people don't know about me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. It's a lot, yeah. Wow. I have so many questions about all of that. Um, <laughs> and I'm certain that we're going to get into how all of your experiences have impacted your art. Right? Yes, I'm sure. And so I, I tend to ask this question to all artists, right? What is your muse, um, what has inspired you to create from? So um, I just kind of have this inner drive to make artwork. Um, it makes me feel happy. Um, it's the main thing that has helped keep me uh, resilient, helped make me resilient when things get really rough. If I uh, can make artwork, that helps. Um, so my life story and my experiences uh, have inspired me to create. Um, and oh, also uh, Buddhist philosophy or East Asian philosophy. I mean, that is something I kind of discovered. Well, when I was at Tulane, I was taking the uh, philosophy of East Asian religion when I was a teenager and it's just really spoken to me. So that, um, that inspires me. Uh, it, it makes my work very philosophical, you know, when I get down to it. Um, also, um, I love playing with color. And I, uh, I took two uh, color theory classes with Ozeklis Ozals. He's, a, um, he's an artist in New Orleans and, uh, and one in uh, California with Marie Thibault. So I just love playing with color. And that was um, probably in 2014 and 15. So I didn't have a lot of color theory background way back and I just used to be intuitive about color. Um, but anyway, yeah, formal issues are also are really fun for me to play with like line, uh, color, composition. I like to play with the, um, the flatness of the picture plane and try to get the, form, the uh, figure ground, you know, like um, it's kind of like, what do you look at first? Usually, you know, um, you look at the background and then there's something on it. Well, I like to try to make that fluctuate. And it's, um, it's a metaphor for me for the spiritual and the material worlds uh, coexisting sort of like non-dualistic thinking. Um, yeah, I like geometry and uh, I was inspired to make puzzles um, where everything fits into place, my um, take on divine order. Um, yeah, I just, you know, I really have a lot of joy. I get a lot of joy out of working on my work. And, uh, even if it's the administrative stuff, it kind of helps keep me grounded. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. You know, we have that in common. So I, oh. I academically, I study Ubuntu and socially engaged Buddhism. Uh, oh, nice. Okay. I think I saw that. Yeah you know, combining those two concepts together to rethink how we think about humanity um, and what it means to be a human being uh, in this moment in time. You know, one of the things you just said, you, you play with color and dimension and, and geometry. And one of the things that drew me in to the piece from behind every beautiful thing was the dimension and the color mm. and this hiddenness, right, of a message hidden behind all of this vibrancy and deepness in the rich color, right? And you look a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. right? And you see this image that is hidden in plain sight. Um, and I just thought, whoa, right? oh. <laughs> whoa, 
Um, Thank you. Like this is what we are living. Um, that you know, literally behind every beautiful thing, taken from that quote from Dylan, there's pain. Mm -hmm. um, and seeing the image behind the image um, in the in the the piece moved me in ways I did not expect to be moved. Oh, thank you so much. It's, it's the truth. Uh, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about all of that in your, uh, when you walk us through the studio. Uh, okay, great. Yeah, there's a lot of thought that goes into everything. So, yeah. And this is, this is my last formal question, right? Okay. We'll get into uh, what everyone came here for, not to hear me talk or ask you questions, but your studio visit. Um, you know, behind every beautiful thing is really um about the human condition about mm -hmm. um the pain the joy the grief the death the dying of this time of this mm -hmm. moment in time right so uh you know i and I'll, I'll ask this to sue too who's on who will who will uh give a visit in a couple of weeks but you know in this moment of death and dying which we are still very much engaged in mm -hmm. uh, and the Buddhists would say we're always engaged in it, right? Right. I mean, Everything like, changes and life is full of suffering, right? right. Yeah. It, it is. Um, what is it that keeps you going? Um, well, um, connection. You know, the main thing is um, really connection with other beings, like human beings. Um, I love to connect with people. Um, I love to connect with uh, animals, dogs and horses. Um, I love to connect with nature. I just, um, yeah, the human connection is the main thing. Um, um, yeah, I love my sons, um, a sense of humor. You know, I, I actually think it's really important to um, have a sense of humor. I often title things with a sense of humor because <laughs> You know, things are pretty dire, but uh, there's also gallows humor. I remember after Hurricane Katrina, um, <laughs> if, you know, they, they, everybody was talking about gallows humor because what are you going to do? You know, uh, get, you know, um, you know, drown in it? No, um, just keep on going. And, uh, and just, you know, I feel like um, what keeps me going is just trying to make myself the best person that I can be, you know, cause that's what I have control of. Um, and then, um, you know, being thoughtful and kind and respectful of others, you know, so that's, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of stuff that keeps me going. Let's see what else. Um, oh, ultimately my belief in divine order and the good goodness of the universe is what, saves me every time, you know, when things are really dire. I just try to remember to um, accept things, you know, kind of like, okay, this is what's going on. Uh, stop fighting it. It's, it's gonna change, you know, like the Buddhist concept, everything changes. So it's not gonna be like this forever. And just, um, yeah, surrender, like that painting, <laughs> surrender, yeah, into the vortex. Yes. So that's that's kind of a lot of what keeps me going. I love that. I love. Oh, thank that. you. I love that. The, this notion of surrendering, right? That uh, it's really resistance that keeps us um, in sort of this rat race of stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And, and, mm -hmm. and if mm -hmm. we just got into the flow. If we just entered into the vortex. Right. right go with the flow. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Go with the yeah. flow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that from. So I'm going to be quiet now because I can talk to you all day long. And oh, turn it over to you um, to walk us through your studio, your presentation. What would you like to share with us? Okay, um, let's see. I will, let me do this screen share thing and we will go to um, my PowerPoint demonstration and we'll go to the first painting. So. Um, you asked me about it, so um, so it's a figure, an, a linear figure falling into this vortex of um, whatever, like surrendering, and these patterns, these um, opaque blue dots, those are based on, uh, I love geometry, and those are based on 
uh, how things grow in nature. Like it's a, called a phylotaxis pattern. So you can kind of see it sort of swirly. Um, can you all see my pointer? I don't know if you can see that. Yes, okay. So it's basically um, how things are connected and it's this figure falling into this um, vortex of nature or life or whatever is going on at the time. So that's, um, yeah. Oh, oh, and I grew up spending summers on the Mississippi Gulf Coast and walking through the marshes and the bayous and out on the beaches. And so this background uh, paint is, um, it reminds me of the patterns that I used to see in nature or that I still see. Like I still walk on the Mississippi Bachelor and I love the patterns that water will make in nature. So, um, all right, so that's that painting. And then we're just gonna, let's see what time is it? Um, I'm just gonna start going through the presentation and um, show you earlier works and end up with the present. So uh, this is a painting called Leaving. It's 58 inches by 64 inches. And um, this was shown at the CAC and it sold out of the CAC at its, um, I often put boats in my work because boats to me mean safety. Um, so there are two boats and um, boats are a big, um, let's see, my grandfather was the captain of a ship and um, we were all boat people. And then um, when there was the threat of a hurricane, um, my father would always park a boat uh, on a trailer outside of the house in case we needed to, um, if, in case the waters came up and we needed to, uh, you know, get on the boat for safety. And my grandparents um, were killed in Hurricane Camille, so that, that, you know, boats are very poignant. And my grandfather was the captain of a, of a big ship. So anyway, so there are the boats. And then there's the... Um, the geometry, which is, you know, to me, spirituality or a sign of the divine uh, everywhere. So here's another painting. Here's a pirogue and there's the geometry and there's another boat there. This is called Leaving and this is 58 inches by 64 inches. Um, let's see. This one's called Boats Passing in the Night. It is 45 inches by 64 inches. And it's, um, they're all, all of these early ones are oil with um, glitter. It's got glitter on it too. These all were shown at the CAC, believe it or not, <laughs> wow. in, a, uh, in a show. I was um, the solo artist. There was a, um, a poet and a, uh, a sculptor. Wow. Um, so this one is called Walking Away from the Fairy Tale. So I started uh, as a female, I started to become disillusioned uh, with the fairy tale. We were taught growing up of, you know, look for your knight in shining armor. And, you know, if you just fall in love uh, and get married, everything's going to be fine. Well, I found out that wasn't necessarily true. We had to be our own knight in shining armor. So this was... Um, this is a painting about that. And there's, I don't know, you can see there's this figure with the arms up. And then in here, there's this figure walking away from that. And it's, it's again, that play with um, the surface and the dimension um, of the, the flat surface. Uh, so this one is 61 by 47 inches. Oops, let's see. Okay, and this painting is called Going and Coming. It's 61 by 47. And it is, um, this is when I started using acrylic with oil on top. Um, this is about sort of the time of in between when you don't really know what's happening. Like there's a boat leaving and there's a boat coming. So um, the figure in the middle is saying goodbye to one thing and uh, sort of like, okay, what's going to happen now? Um, I'm a big woman of action, so I don't like those in-between phases. Um, but that's what that's about. Oh, and this painting I did, it's also very large, 61 by 47 inches. And it's, there's a figure in here. And this was done after Katrina when people wanted to go home. Uh, and it's called Going Home. Uh, and there, there's the geometry um, floating through. 
like everything's gonna be okay. We just have to keep going. Um, this is called rain boat going. This is 18 by 18 inches. The boats, uh, the boat and the geometry, uh, rain boat coming. Uh, and this is, I did a whole series of paintings um, and the theme was welcoming the dragon. And uh, that's another kind of Buddhist tenant of, um, you know, you welcome really challenging things because they're gonna um, teach you something and make you stronger and more insightful. So um, that dragon right there is actually from a drawing of my youngest son when he was younger, he did that drawing and then I started using it in paintings. And then there's an image of a, a person on a horse, that's me in the background. <laughs> and then the patterning is the Celtic knotwork. Um, that's my heritage, uh, Welsh, and then also German. Um, let's see, so this one, it was also in that show, um, it's called Calling the Wind. And it's uh, a boat in a becalmed sea and it's kind of waiting for inspiration. You know, it's waiting for the wind. If you're a, uh, a, a sailor, you know that you need wind to have the boat move. So that's what that's about. Um, here's a boat um, passing, it's called Passing Through Hades Green. And so it's a boat going through some, um, some challenging times. <laughs> So uh, that's, let's see, what size is that? 24 by 30. Okay, and then, oh, also after Katrina, um, I decided to start using some of my journaling in my artwork. So um, I started just making art with some of the things that we were dealing with. For example, like today is February 16th. So um, yeah, I just started writing about what was going on. Um, so there are four of these, and they were shown at the um, Montgomery College in, uh, of Art in Rockville, Maryland. They wanted to have work about Katrina a few years ago. Um, and these are 15 inches by 11 inches on paper. And this is one called um, Unknown Day, because I have learned, it's happened again with COVID, um, when humans have uh, a lot of stress around them, they might forget what day it is. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened to us uh, after Katrina and it happened to me in this last year and a half. Uh, so then I started doing this series called, um, it's based on the three's three wise monkeys, Japanese proverb of, um, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. So it's kind of like, how can we live in New Orleans? You know, <laughs> how can we keep going on? Uh, so that's, yeah, um, that's me. I started using myself as the model. So that's me with my hands over my ears. Uh, hear no evil. Oops. <laughs> see no evil and speak no evil. Um, and then it's my sense of humor. Uh, there's, uh, you know, a figure of a woman, a woman, you know, kind of, you know, daintily hold, raising up her skirt to take a step, but she's looking down like, uh, what's, what's going to happen now? Um, and it's called, um, let's see, looking down pink. And then uh, this one is called looking up green kind of like okay you know what else is going to happen uh so that that one's in norway which is kind of fun um and then um at that time i was feeling pretty isolated so i just did um this is called solo boat it's um let's see it's all oil with glitter on um canvas 18 by 18 inches and it's you know I was thinking a whole lot about boats again, uh, so after Katrina and all. Um, here's another one with a boat coming towards a figure. Um, and actually, this is a Portuguese fishing boat um, from when, uh, when my kids were little, we all went to uh, Portugal for about two weeks and that was really fun. And I brought back some uh, little wooden, um, boats for them to play with. So I use that often, that Portuguese fishing boat. 
Um, so I was thinking about boats a lot. And then um, I had this like, you know, image of um, filling up a house that had been flooded and gutted in the Lower Ninth Ward, filling it up with hand folded paper boats. Mm. Um, and I had gone to a talk um, put on by the Joe Mitchell Center and they were asking, they were talking about um, giving money towards outdoor installations. And I uh, heard from Elizabeth Underwood who was in charge of art in action. And she was wanting to host things like that. So I just got with her and I said, hey, um, here's my idea. What do you think? And she's like, yeah, let's do that. And um, I realized it was too much for me. So I invited two friends from graduate school who are uh, currently working artists, Anastasia Pelias and Rian Karan. And I said, hey, do y'all want to help? And so, yeah, they did. And so the three of us um, did this collaborative piece that was really fun, got us all out of isolation. And we worked with the community. Um, so Rian brought in a whole lot of these paper boats from uh, Denver. And then we made a lot of paper boats. And then we asked the neighbors, you know, did they want to help? Um, we went to a church and said, this is what we're doing. You know, do y'all want to help make us paper boats? And you can be part of this. So, um, you know, because everybody was just really, um, you know, in shock. Mm -hmm. So um, it was really great. And we had um, a soundtrack that I put on a boom box from um, Caves in uh, Greece by uh, an artist named Sophocles. And um, we found these planks. So um, you can see this is like as you're walking in there, are these big wooden planks. So people had to walk in single file through the planks on the planks is like walking on water kind of. Um, and then they got to the back room and they were confronted with a mirror and a sea of paper boats. And it's kind of like, oh, you know, what do we do now? And they had to turn around and, you know, navigate back to the front uh, around people because there were a lot of people who came in and, uh, and end up going towards the light back to the front door. And um, so I envisioned it as being kind of like an altar or a shrine for people who had lo experienced loss and um, from hurricanes, surely I did, uh, people all around New Orleans. And um, so we set up a little altar and people came and offered um, things, put things on the altar there. And then sometimes I would just hang out there and people would come and tell me their stories about being uh, stuck with the water rising. They had to get into their attic and then they had to get out of their attic through onto the roof and the boats they said in this installation reminded them of the boats that came uh, to save them. And they said it was a healing and cathartic experience to tell me their story. So I, that's the thing, I love connection and I love to hear people's stories. Yeah, and I'm happy when artwork that I do is helpful to others. So um, this is a close-up photograph. Um, it's called Whirlpool Boats. And then I got back into making the puzzles. Um, so this is uh, called These Ritual Visions. I don't know if you can read it, but I used, um, there's a, um, a photograph that I had made into a puzzle that's um, the handful of paper boats and then a photograph of the, um, uh, like Pontchartrain, the water. And, um, and you can see it better here. And you can see Lake Pontchartrain back there and the wording, the title. And this piece was um, bought and then donated to the historic New Orleans collection. And these are 24 by 36 inches and made out of um, plastic puzzle pieces. And then I did another, another series, a diptych uh, of, you know, like a woman standing on Lake Pontchartrain, uh, you know, kind of like, I don't want to see that we're surrounded by water. Um, so that's what that's about. It's my sense of humor again. Uh, we're still here. Um, and then a few other ones. These are smaller, um, you know, standing in a whirlpool of boats, um, you know. And then another one with the sky. 
Um, and then I started, yeah, those, these were done when I was at Louisiana Artworks. I, I was granted a, a residency for a year and that was really great. And um, so this is me, um, you know, getting back to um, the silence within uh, sort of like um, getting into my intuition and it's called hearing, trying to listen. You know, because um, sometimes if uh, we're working too hard or doing too much, we're not really paying attention to what we need to do, um, which is our intuition. Uh, this is, let's see, it's acrylic and oil. It's 18 by 18 inches. Uh, this one's called taking a chance, uh, you know, like get off the chair, <laughs> take a chance. It's also uh, acrylic and oil on canvas. And this is, oh, this is called wading through water. So it's basically, you know, um, <clears throat> getting through, you know, um, traumas and hurricanes, but doing it with grace and um, elegance and beauty, you know, but, you know, we just keep on going and kindness. Yeah. Uh, so that's what that's about. That's uh, 18 by 18 inches. And then I started, uh, it started coming into like the time of the Me Too movement. And so um, a lot of people I knew were starting to um, go within and pay attention to what was going on and maybe their past, some of their past experiences. So um, these, I started um, drawing and painting mandalas. This one's not painted. I have a whole series of, um, wash paintings that are just completely abstract. Um, but these, so this is a mandala to um, hear no evil, <laughs> uh, a mandala to speak no evil, or no, to see no evil, and a mandala to speak no evil. Um, and then at that same time, I felt like uh, women were being strong women who were speaking up about what, you know, what their histories were and everything. They were being targeted. So um, I started, I did a few of these um, and it's based on Richard Prince's um, Marl, Marlboro Cowboy, Cowboy series from the early 1980s. He, all, he had a, uh, you know, Marlboro man on a horse and it was like, so, you know, cool. So I thought I'd take that horse and um, put a female on it and have her running. Yeah, so uh, even though she's targeted, she's still fine. And so there's another one. Um, and then let's see, yeah, I felt like women were climbing up this hill uh, and this is called uh, Climbing Transparently. It's uh, flash paint on stretch canvas, 18 by 24 inches. Um, yeah, and then uh, this is called Survivor. So it's, you know, based on, you know, women going through a lot and they're surviving it and, uh, you know, maybe they're thinking of their history. And then this is um, a drawing actually over a, uh, a photograph of my studio at the time. And that's me standing in a yoga pose called tree with my dog. And then, uh, you know, like one of the Hindu gods with many arms on that side. So, oh, so this is when um, we had some politicians who were um, spreading fake news, you know, like fake news, fake news. That was all in the, uh, the news. And I thought it would be fun to kind of turn it on its head and um, put it with two female figures because often when women tell the truth about what's happened to them, they're called liars or they, it's called fake news. So that's what this piece is about. And uh, this is <clears throat> 30 by 48 inches. It's ink and graphite on glassine paper. And um, this one and the next one may be going to a permanent collection. We're in, in negotiation right now. And so this one is, um, this one is based um, on the, um, let's see, I'll just write it, uh, I'll read it, let's see. Um, this is a piece 
which includes a selected quote from when uh, Brett, there were, um, let's see, Dr. Christine Blousey Ford was asked to speak about her experience with Greg Kavanaugh during the Supreme Court nominee hearing. And she was really brave and I just, wow, and vulnerable. And that was, that was really intense. And um, so I did this piece in honor of that and all the women who have gone through those experiences. And I've quoted um, US Senator Cory Booker in here in the middle. He said, he told her, and I thought it was just so wonderful, watching your experience here, it's no wonder that many sexual assault survivors hide their experiences in the past and spend their lives suffering in pain silence and spend their lives surviving in pained silence. We all admire you for what you're doing. So this one is titled Ode to Dr. Ford, who was interviewed um, and told her story, and the Star Girls, which are the Star Girls. There's a group in New Orleans um, called Star, and it's uh, sexual trauma awareness and response. And they have group therapy for women or people, not just women, people who have gone through uh, sexual assault and trauma. So this is in honor of them. And at the top, it says, throw off and reject the mantle of guilt and shame because a lot of times survivors, they feel guilty and ashamed. And then, so it's kind of like a mantra and a, a talisman for women who've gone through that. And then at the bottom, it says, you know, freedom, flourish, thrive, prosper. Uh, anyway, so that's what that painting is about, that piece. So then we move into the COVID time, uh, the pandemic. And so I did this piece, let's see, um, it's called Tuesday, April 28th, COVID-19. And on the side, you can see uh, it was early on and uh, I signed up for texts from NOLA Ready and we would get it, I would get a text every day. And this one says, Tuesday, April 28th, NOLA Ready, 15 new cases and four deaths since yesterday, 12.04 PM. So they, I wanted to document that because I found it so profound. Um, and then uh, let's see, here's another one. This one is uh, 12 by nine inches and it's addressing the COVID-19 pandemic in our midst and the multitude of our emotions and react to it, reaction to it. Do we move forward? Do we stand in place? Do we cover our mouths? Do we turn away? What are we to do? And that was early on before we knew to wear masks, but you know, she's got her hands over her mouth. Um, so that's that piece. And then, you know, it's kind of like, ah, what do we do? You know, um, you know, it's kind of a scary time. So that's called On a Green Chair in 2020. Um, and then let's see, this one is called, um, this was done in 2021, the first piece I did, and it's called Untitled for Now. It's, it's my sense of humor again. It's kind of like, uh, what's going to happen in 2021? So we didn't know, and it's, it's still really intense. So I titled it un, Untitled for Now. And then um, how do we get through it? With unwavering fervor. So that's what this one's called. This is um, acrylic on Yupo paper, and it's 26 by 20 inches. You can see that behind me. Some of these are behind me. And then um, this is the one I did right before Hurricane Ida. Um, it's called Before the Dawn. And it's, um, it's a play on that um, adage, um, it's always darkest before the dawn. So that's um, you know, a figure going through the water and which become, became uh, like a prophecy because <laughs> we got hit again and uh, I have a whole lot of stuff that uh, I have to fix with my house. Um, but once again, here's another little piece I did. How do we get through it? You know, we wade through it with dignity, beauty and grace. And um, let's see, 
And then this one is, we also persist. Yeah, so um, she persisted, we persist through it. This is um, 29 by 33 inches and it was shown at the city park artists in the park and sold like right away. Uh, it's got rhinestones and glitter. And then this is the last one. And you know, how do we also do it? We get through it with um, doing things we love. That's you know, an image of me with a horse, which is I helped a friend train her horse um, for like a year during the pandemic. And uh, you know, that was uh, that was really fun. Yeah. So that's that's the last painting. That's we're pretty much up to uh, now. So that's that's it. <laughs> The end. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so wow. there, let's see. Oh, we're right on time. That's amazing. We are okay. right on time. Incredible. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. That was amazing, right? Some of the things, um, you know, the images are stunning. The colors are stunning. The lines are stunning, right? Yeah, um, thank And so to, to to hear you talk about them and then to see them, right? To read them is really wonderful. Uh, you know, words, you mentioned safety, nature, self-reliance, um, uh, the divine, right? The uh, experience as a woman and uh, the play on nature um, and then ritual visions, whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Thank you. Wow. So it, it brings me to ask, you know, what, um, let's see, how do you ask this in the, in the right way? <laughs> um, what do you hope for your work or what, actually, what has your work taught you about the human experience? Uh, what has my work taught me about the human experience? Um, that's a really great question. Um, just that um, we're all given a gift, I guess, and that what, you know, each one of us has something wonderful to offer and that if we can find it and do what gives us pleasure, then we can feel connected in the world. And that's what I've learned through my work, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you for that. I would invite the audience to ask questions in the chat. Um, it's actually a small group. So if you have a question, okay. I'd invite you to, um, it's a small enough group, right? To, to come uh, off of mute and to ask your question uh, to Fran about her work, about her process, um, about the beautiful colors, which is what drew me um, George, George Shear, who's the executive director of the CAC, when I was going through all of the pieces, he joked that I loved um, uh, greens and blues and turquoises, and he's right. Um, <laughs> right? Um, and just the, I love deep, rich color. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the way you juxtapose it with vibrant colors, it just like, it just does something to you. I'm, I'm, if you can't tell, I'm, I'm fanboying out uh, because <laughs> it's that wonderful. Thank you for that. Uh, that's great. I've never heard that. That's wonderful. Um, yeah. Well, I love great color too. <laughs> I love color. Uh, it's really fun. Yeah. Oh, we have a question, Fran. So, oh, okay. uh, May asks, "What's your favorite piece?" Um, I would say that. Um, probably I have a few favorite pieces, um, Into the Vortex is probably one of my all time favorite pieces. That's one that, you know, was chosen to be in the show. Um, I also love the painting, um, you know, leaving from early on with the boats. Um, and then the, the image of the woman wading through water, you know, I just love that because it's, um, you know, we just get through it, you know, and we just surrender and um, stop fighting and we just wade through it and uh, with beauty and dignity and grace. So yeah, those, those are, oh, and then the horse, 
the horse painting because <laughs> I, I love I love horses. So. Yeah. So there's yeah. OK, there's a few. Uh, there you go. Uh, so Lisa Collins says, Fran, that was amazing. Thanks. I learned so much about you and your process. Fascinating. I'm awe inspired. Um, and May second, the fangirling, which is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, that's really yeah. sweet. Yeah, that's I'm very appreciative. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, one of the things that um, I think you wanted me to talk about was my process. Yes, please. So um, I have another slideshow, but I don't know if there's enough time. I could just tell you what my process is, sure. if you like. OK, so um, a bunch of years ago, I realized that I, I started using myself as the model, but I was doing it in this weird way. But I, then I realized I could just take photographs of myself in any any um, form that I wanted. And it was so simple and, you know, cause I was the model and I was free. Uh, so I would take a photograph of myself and then um, I would make a stencil. I would do a line drawing over it and make a stencil of it. And, um, you know, I would blow it up. The photograph I would blow up to the size that I wanted. Like if I had a big canvas, I would blow it up to that size and then I would do a stencil of the drawing. And that's how I would get those line drawings. Um, and then I would transfer them onto the, um, the picture plane, you know, the surface. And then I would paint them, you know, with a you know, very delicate paintbrush. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's my process. And oh, I, I use the computer and the camera a lot. Um, and then, you know, the painting, uh, this painting, you know, into the vortex with all the dots, um, the way I tried to figure that out mathematically, but I could not do it. So I found it on, uh, online that the, um, the dot patterning and I, uh, blew it up <laughs> and I made this huge stencil. You saw how big that painting was. Yeah. Um, I made a huge stencil and um, transferred the image of the dots onto the painting and then hand painted them. Yeah, so um, that's my process. You know, a lot of people are curious about that. Uh, yeah. It's, it's uh, labor intensive, <laughs> but you know, it's fun. You know, it keeps, keeps me sane, <laughs> keeps me happy. Yeah, yeah. And that's what matters. That's what matters. Right? Yeah, yeah. 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 There's, there is um, there's a, a story behind every piece, but I think for me, the joy of doing the work comes through. Oh. And, I think, um, and I think, you know, when I, when I saw in the vortex in person, mm -hmm. I saw the digital image first, and I saw it in person, I thought, whoa, like this is, this takes some time, this is meticulously done, right? And there is joy and sort of doing things well mm -hmm. um, and in doing what you love and it comes through in the work I have to say. well thank you well my my issue is um you know it's hard for me to get into the studio i i will fight it and fight because it's you know i have to be real self self-reflective and i also have you know like um my other, you know, like job of uh, keeping my house in order and uh, all of that stuff. And uh, like right now, I have so much work to do on this house. I probably, it's going to be hard to be in the studio. And, um, but when I finally get into the studio and I start, you know, like this, you know, daily ritual of making artwork, it, it becomes very uh, meditative. Yeah. yeah, very meditative and joyful. Oh, and I also wanted to say... Um, I didn't show any of my uh, abstract pieces um, because this was kind of like a figurative show. But um, when you know the content gets too emotional and intense for me with the figures, I move to abstract paintings, and then I'm just I'm simply working with line and color and composition, and they're very very meticulous. And if somebody wants to see them, they you know my I updated my website during, co you know, the first part of COVID. And uh, so everything's up online so they can see those pieces. I have uh, several series of abstract paintings and those are very calming and meditative for me too. Yeah. 
you should, you should go. I, I looked at those earlier today. I found they're, they're really. Oh, good. okay. Yeah. I want to I uh, honor Andrew. Uh, oh who, yeah. Two part uh, question. Two part question. Go ahead, Andrew. We don't have much yes. time. Yes. Okay. Yes, thanks so much. First of all, thank you, David. Thank you, CSC, for making this whole presentation possible. Uh, it's really wonderful to have the access uh, to the art and the artist. Uh, actually, Fran anticipated my first question, which was, uh, uh, apart from the figurative works, the very deeply narrative personal works that you've shown here, uh, is there another aspect to your aesthetic? Uh, again, the abstract, the non-figurative, which you just answered. I guess in part, so uh, that takes care of that query. The other thing is looking back a year and a half ago when we went into lockdown and when we were quarantining and so forth, was that period of enforced isolation uh, an opportunity to refocus yourself, uh, to maybe get some quiet, uh, some uh, distraction-free uh, circumstance to make art or was it in fact a debilitating dynamic because you were not able to have that human interaction that you speak of uh, uh, because you had to be by yourself. Did it work very much in one way or another, or maybe in both? Well, that's a really great question. So what I did was I spent the first part of it um, rebuilding my website. I completely rebuilt my website. And then I um, started making artwork. Um, I just, was in the studio every day and uh, started making artwork and I started looking online for opportunities to show it. And so um, I showed some of those pieces uh, in an online competition in um, the Terrence Art Museum in um, Los Angeles. And then, um, then the New Orleans Academy of Fine Arts invited me to do um, some miniature pieces. So I just kept painting because once I get going, I get kind of on a roll. And then Arthur Roger, he uh, invited me to show some of my work for uh, the Art in the Time of Empathy show that was in November and I think ended this um, in January. And then, um, and then, yeah, I just kept making artwork. Um, so yeah, I, I, and then I did three more pieces because I was applying to more shows and um, it just kept me going. Um, yeah, so actually that, that making art, um, it wasn't, COVID was not debilitating at that time. Um, it feels a little bit more debilitating now because I have, you know, a lot of damage to repair, but um, when I when I get when I finally get focused into making artwork, it, it just becomes uh, I become euphoric. <laughs> it's just really weird. Like David was saying, uh, the joy comes through. It just it just makes me feel so great. Yeah, it's like this flow. You, David was talking about that flow. You know, to me, it 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 opens up that flow with you know with the universe or whatever. Not to be too whatever, but yeah, that's what it does. So thanks, that's a great question. Thank you, Fran, thank you, Andrew. We have one more question, Fran, and then we're gonna close out. This is from Laura Tennyson at the CAC. She says, Fran, oh, okay. why do your figurative images turn away? Oh, that's a really good question. Hmm. Um, probably, I mean, in one reason, for one, well, let's see. At one point, um, I was feeling pretty targeted because of some things that were going on in my life. And I was just, you know, like turning away from that energy, you know, like, I don't want that. Yeah. And then another reason, which is very truthful, is that um, I am not as good with the face with portraiture as I would like to be. And so that's the honest to God truth. I've taken a lot of figure drawing classes and and drawn the figure a lot but I, my next challenge is to uh to get more into um some portraiture classes and then maybe well actually that is my one of the questions was what is your future what do you want to do that's what i want to do i want to have and i know a lot of um artists are doing that like they're doing um figures 
with the gaze right at the viewer. And they are triumphant. And that Gio Suave is one of them. And that's what I want to do. Um, so yeah, the figures won't be turning away. They're going to be, you know, um, different. They're going to be different. So that's a great question. Uh, oh, thanks. Incredible answer. Well, thank you, Laura. <laughs> <Tennyson>. <laughs> thank you, Fran. Thank you, Laura, for that question. Yeah. Fran, I want to thank you for sharing your gift thank with you. us. Um, thank you for making, right, and creating. Um, mm -hmm for all of us to take in and to sit with and to be with, right? Uh, the beauty behind the beauty of the art um, mm -hmm. and um, whatever it brings up for us uh, in our experience as a human on this, on this planet. I thank you immensely thank uh, you. for your work yeah. uh, and for tonight's discussion. I also want to thank everyone who has tuned in tonight. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for your engagement. Um, we have one more Studio V uh, on Thursday, October 14th. Uh, we will explore the studio and work of artist Sue Asinia, who was also uh, included in Behind Every Beautiful Thing. Uh, so we invite you to tune in here on Zoom or on Facebook Live, uh, Thursday, October 14th, 5 to 6 p.m. Again, from Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank well, you. thank you, thank you. It's it's an honor um, to be here and thank you for choosing me. And, you know, I hope the talk and my artwork can uh, give some people some joy and inspiration in their lives. So, yeah. So it's great to talk to you. I, I loved um, meeting you. I met you that first night and uh, at the opening and, it, you know, it was great. Yeah, you're a great uh, interviewer, so thank you. Thank you, thank yeah. you. I'm such a huge fan. I'm going to have to go have a bourbon now uh, because I was that nervous. So thank you. Um, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to another dialogue with you. Um, yeah. Sounds like we have a lot to talk about. We yeah, do. I would love that. Yeah. We do. We yeah. Do. Thank you all. Good night. Be well, Fran. Good luck on the, on the recovery. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everybody who showed up. I really appreciate it. <laughs> it's been wonderful.